Hello there, fellow monster hunters, and welcome to the Witcher Bestiary, the place where we go over and describe the various entities and creatures from the universe of the Witcher. Today we shall be covering a category of entities that we did briefly touch upon in another video, but I hadn't yet dedicated an episode just for them. In case you didn't read the video title, these entities are called Elementa. Now, some time ago I did make a video on gargoyles and golems, and in that one I did try to briefly explain the difference between said gargoyles and golems, which are constructs, and actual elementa. Long story short, constructs are pretty much automatons. Elementa, on the other hand, are beings from literally a different dimension, which get summoned into the real world and then inhabit a construct-esque shape. And that is why things like earth elementals and fire elementals and ice elementals are so similar to golems. Of course, not all elements are the same, with the Jinn, aka the air elemental, being an entirely different beast. They are also not restricted to the four elements. Hounds of the Wild Hunt, for example, are also considered elementa, as they too are called from a different realm. Elementa usually live in the appropriate elemental plane. In the material world, they tend to have rather weird and scary shapes, with claws and spikes. They can vary greatly in skill and intellect. The hounds of the wild hunt seem to resemble mundane creatures like dogs or wolves. The Neufrey are a sentient race with skill compared to the greatest of magic wielders, while genies are beings of nearly unfathomable power. Since for this video and arguably the next one too, we're gonna focus on just the four elements, the realms of these beings are as follows. The elemental plane of air, inhabited by the Jinn, the elemental plane of earth, inhabited by the Dao, the elemental plane of fire, inhabited by the Ifrits, and the elemental plane of water, inhabited by the Marids. The lore on all these creatures and realms is unfortunately kind of uneven and not that rich overall, so I thought we could begin today by covering the most straightforward one, aka the Earth Elemental. The journals from The Witcher 2 and 3 had this to say about them, to quote, The Earth Elemental is the younger brother of the legendary Dao, the genie capable of creating earthquakes and flattening mountains. Younger and less powerful, but also more mischievous. Felling trees, crushing walls and smashing people to pulp can be counted among the creature's pranks. But only if their master allows it, of course. The earth elemental always serves its master faithfully. It is often employed as a guard, as it is tireless and ever vigilant. It does have senses as living beings do, but it always recognizes the presence of intruders. It fears no monster, let alone humans. The creature's most dangerous weapons are its mighty arms. A blow from the earth elemental is akin to a battering ram hitting a city gate, and turns a normal human into a bloody stain. Its repasts are especially dangerous, for this apparently sluggish creature can strike quickly as well as strongly. Thus one has to defend oneself against its blows with all available means, including signs and potions. According to the fight fire with fire rule, or rather the fight strength with strength, one should also use the strong blows against the elemental, since only such attacks can grind its stone body down. The earth elemental's body is solid rock, so the creature cannot be blooded or poisoned. It is best to summon a team of dwarven miners to use pickaxes on it until it is done for. However, if the witcher has no team of dwarf miners at hand, he should use regular means. The earth elemental, though it has no weaknesses, can still be beaten. They are made of mud, clay, sand and rock dust clumped together with water and brought alive with magic. While seemingly slow and ponderous, the creatures are nevertheless dangerous and should be avoided at all cost. They can withstand a tremendous amount of punishment. Due to their enormous mass, they are virtually impossible to knock off balance. They do not bleed nor feel any pain from poison or fire. They kill men with astonishing ease, whether by smashing them with their fists or hurling enormous rocks at them. Their only weakness is their vulnerability to dimeridium dust. 
Thus, before combat, one should prepare a full arsenal of bombs containing this ingredient. Earth elementals are indeed a test of strength and endurance. Even with a silver sword coated in elemental oil, earth elementals can resist impressive amounts of punishment before crumbling, while being able to dish out frighteningly powerful blows with their fists. Axi and Igni also have little effect, and the sign of Ard will do only a very brief stagger, if any at all. As said, dimeridium bombs make these elementals more susceptible to harm, but even those do not make them less dangerous. Strike once, twice if you judge it safe, then roll out of the way of the inevitable counterattack. Use heavy attacks for better damage output. You should be alert for elementals to raise a foot high off the ground. What follows is either a powerful ground stomp which sends a wave of rock piercing through the earth in a line before the elemental, or a shorter range cluster of them surrounding the elemental. If the earth elemental jumps off the ground, move away as quickly as possible. The resulting shockwave knocks down any nearby victims and also creates a ring of rock around the both of you at a certain range. This prevents you from escaping or getting too far away from the elemental. The rock ring will disappear after a few seconds. The hammer blows delivered by the elemental's fists can be made easier to avoid by using the sign of Irdan. Also, if you see the elemental crouch down and cover itself with its arms, do not attack. That will be partially reflected back at you, staggering you or breaking your quen sign, and the elemental will soon slam its fist into the ground, creating another shockwave. Nevertheless, the sign of quen is definitely your best friend against these. You'll be able to use an attack combo right through its slow, single powerful attacks, and put multiple hits on it before you have to break off, and then have to wait for it to recharge and repeat. The elemental is also slow enough that some of its attacks can be completely evaded by your quick, short-range dodge, allowing you to keep hitting it until it finally catches you and breaks your Quen shield. You'll need that though, as these things take a ridiculous amount of punishment and damage to defeat. Now, since they are arguably the closest to the earth elemental in aspect and mannerisms, if you will, I figured we could also say a few words about the Ice Elemental today. To quote, An Ice Elemental is a mass of frozen water animated by magic. Deprived of consciousness or independent will, this Elemental is boundlessly obedient to the orders of the mage who created it. Those orders usually contain only one syllable, and that is KILL. Ice elementals have no qualms about carrying out this order, nor any particular difficulty in doing so. Gifted with incredible strength, they are completely invulnerable to poison and fire, deprived of sensitive organs, hard as permafrost, and all in an incredibly difficult opponent. A witcher's only chance at tipping the scales towards victory is to toss a dimeritium bomb, as shrapnel made of this metal interferes with the workings of the spell that gives the creature life. Beyond that remains only prayer. Ice elementals fight very similarly to the earth elementals. They can strike with their massive fists, stomp on the ground to knock over their targets, or send a ripple of ice carving through the terrain at their foes. As with other elementals, you should avoid attacking it in the front if possible. Dodge its attacks as they cannot be parried, and make extensive use of the sign Hirden to slow it down. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about the Elementa of the Witcher setting, as well as an overview on the Earth and Ice Elementals for today. I do think this is another of those creature categories that may seem confusing in the beginning, but it all clears up after learning a few things about each representative. Not sure if it's gonna be the next time, but I am gonna cover the rest of the Elementa or at the very least I'll go over the Ifrit, the Fire Elemental, and the Jinn. I really would have liked to cover the Jinn separately, but unfortunately it doesn't have that much lore behind it. So I'll probably end up bunching everything in just one episode. If you enjoyed the video, or at least found it informative, do try to support the series by watching, commenting, liking, sharing, and subscribing. Also do share your own thoughts on the Elementa of the Witcher, in the comments below if you want. Thanks a lot for watching, and Belidale's blessings be upon you.